All right, so we wanted to put a little video together. Those, if you're studying the reciprocal apparatus of the hind end, along with the passive stay apparatus, I think sometimes it's really helpful to actually see this in 3D on a limb and also even get an idea of how this functions. So two main components of the reciprocal apparatus would be the peroneus tersus, which you can see coming out right here. And that bifurcates and then it has a detachment medial of the hawk and then center right here. Your other component then, flip this around, would be your superficial flexor tendon, which is right here. There's a subcutaneous bursa going over the point of the hawk here. If you guys have studied that, a, a bump on there would be a, uh, um, that would be called capped hawk. So this actually switches sides completely with the gastrocnemus. So this is your gastrocnemus muscle here, and you can see these tendons actually go 180 degrees and switch places with the superficial flexor tendon here. So that muscle belly is up underneath, your gastrocnemus is on top, peroneus tersus is here. That makes it so that as you flex the hawk, you're also flexing the stifle, and you can also see that we're pulling our coffin bone in, flexing at the level of the fetlock too. So what allows these horses to lock that limb and to be able to stand with very little muscle is up here in the patella. So here's your patella here. You have three ligaments associated with the patella. Whoops, this is slippery. You have your lateral, your central or middle, and then your medial patellar ligament. It's your medial patellar ligament that's gonna hold the patella in a locked position. Right here, there's a ridge that this patella comes up and locks on. That's the tro medial, tro uh, medial ridge of the trochlea right here. So it, it's not a complete mechanical lock though, as best I can tell. So what's happening is this is coming up here and I actually had to drill a hole. There's, there are your quadriceps muscles here, which are associated with lifting and pulling your patella. The quadriceps are made up on, this is your medial side here. You have your vastus medialis, rectus femoris down the top, and then, uh, um, shoot, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, sorry. And then underneath all of those, then you have your, uh, um, what's the other one, Trish, vastus? Is it medial? No, it's, uh, well, I just drew a blank. It's underneath all of those. It's like, it sounds like another Roman gladiator, but anyway, that's down the center there that you can't really see that in books. When you look at books, it makes you think that the quadriceps are made up of three muscles. And then you wonder why they call them the quadriceps, but, um, there actually is, uh, uh, it'll come to me. It'll come to me after the video's over anyway. So for the horse to keep this patella in a locked position, there has to be a small amount of tension held. This is your vastus medialis here. There's a small amount of tension held there that pulls that up and over that ridge. You can kind of see that wanting to lock in right there. It's not a deep enough ridge though to create just a mechanical lock. So I actually drilled a hole so that I could, I could do that for you. So if I were to lift this leg upwards here, you can see the movement there all the way up and down the leg. Oh man, that's hard to hold on to, right? All right, so we want to pull this up and I've got my little rod here. I made a hole just like I was an orthopedic surgeon. Okay, now this rod is going to just imagine that this is the tension held by the vastus medialis that's keeping this patella up and over that medial ridge there. So now you can see when we lift this leg up, 
that we are locked. I'm pushing down as hard as I can right now on this clock and can't get any motion out of that. So the rest of your suspensory system then is, is made up of your deep digital flexor tendon, your suspensory ligament. I think farriers tend to understand most of the distal anatomy pretty well. And because that the, your, hot, your fetlock there is bent or going forward, weight of the horse then is what's causing them to, to be able to stand in a re relaxed position there at the level of the fetlock. So that's just sort of a quick guide. There's lots of other small components that play a role in this other than those but um, that kind of gives you a, like a just a basic understanding of how this is working so there people have theorized that I don't I'm sure everybody has seen that like most horses when they're standing with the patella locked or, or using their stay apparatus to rest it's typically on one hind leg at a time so the theory is, is that there is some muscle tension held by the vastus medialis, and as that starts to fatigue, the horse then will switch to his other leg and lock that and give that vastus medialis a rest on the other side. It's amazing how much different information you can get from textbooks. And so there doesn't seem to be an exact science on this. The other question would be then, why do horses have locking patellas? Um, and I don't have the answer to that, and neither does some of the surgeons that I've talked to. It's um, often associated with underdeveloped quadriceps muscles, and we know that as they develop those, often they can resolve that locking patella. It could also be that there are flaws in that, in that cartilage ridge that the patella is locking on. So anyway, I hope that was helpful, getting to see it in 3D, um, and we'll catch you guys later. We're we're back again. We're gonna add this on two reasons because number one, I couldn't remember the name of the vastus interme intermedius. Remember I was saying that there's four muscles to the quadriceps, vastus medialis, rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, and then the one that's buried underneath is the vastus intermedius. So I couldn't stand the fact that I forgot that and so I wanted to add it. But then I also wanted to show I didn't really demonstrate very well. Here's your stifle joint here. Um, here's your gastric nemus. This is the medial head of the gastric nemus coming down. That's where it's gonna swap with the superficial right there. But you can you can follow these fiber, fibers up here and there's a tuberosity right here on the medial side of the femur. And so now when you look here, this is this is just the end of the femur right here. Here's your stifle joint. You can appreciate that movement there as we flex and extend the leg. So there's your gastric nemus coming in, pulling downward and flexing the stifle joint. So hock joint, this is kind of pan out, see the whole thing again, as this leg is pulled into extension by the extensor muscles, extensor tendons, um, you're, you see that it aids in the flexion of that stifle. So. All right, now I think I have everything that I wanted to get in there. So, catch you guys later.